Hey, it's Will. I've got a brief but hopefully interesting video to show you here. This is accompanying the Chapter 19 addendum, which is on vacuum tube processing, or vacuum tube emulating, rather, for a high gain guitar and bass preamps and stuff like that. A big chunk of that chapter is about something called grid conduction. If you don't know what that is, you can grab the addendum at the link that's in the comments below. So what I've got set up right here is a Rack AFX7 plugin that I use to design, uh, design distortion algorithms. We're going to hop into this in a second. Before that, I want to look at the WAV file uh, that I use to test a lot of these distortion algorithms. This is actually a strat loop. It sounds like this. Um, it's a loop that I got from I don't remember where, and you can tell by the this is you pattern right here that it's in stereo and there may be some kind of slapback delay between the two channels or something like that but it doesn't have a bunch of distortion processing which is what i like another thing just to let you know is i play strats and tellies as well as les pauls and i have parker fly you can have uh, an amp setup to give you a great sound with a high gain humbucker output plug your strat into that and then all of a sudden it sounds horrible and it's not because the amp is horrible, it's because the two instruments are very, very different. And what I found is that if I design a distortion algorithm for my Parker Fly and plug my Strat into it, it's hit or miss. It may sound good, it may not. But if I design a distortion algorithm that always sounds good with my Strat, it will always sound good with my Parker Fly as well. Or let's say usually sound good. So I kind of like to use a Strat or a Tele as a test uh, wave file for this kind of processing. In this, in this particular um, wave file here, each of these blue chunks is one note event, meaning one plucked note. And you can see that all of these events have a very common feature about them, which is that the leading edge has a blast of energy or a blast of high amplitude. It can be very dramatic, like in this case right here, where the large majority of the body of this note is a very, very low or, or nominal level in here, and the, the only time it exceeds here is on the outer the blast here at the beginning of the note. And if you play a strat, of course, you know that the way that you, that you pick the note is very, very important in the distortion that you get when you run through a distortion box or a distorted amp as well. So in the plugin that we're going to look at, what we're really going to be doing is imagining that we're right in this high amplitude portion of the note and we're going to see the harmonic evolution that occurs within the triode models as we go from low amplitude to high amplitude back down to a low amplitude. So that's what we're really going to be testing in this particular plugin. Now this plugin is for distortion algorithms that I use. I've only got the left four columns turned on, so you can ignore all the rest of this stuff. I use this for making all kinds of distortion algorithms, tube and solid state. And the way that it works here is that each of these is a triode model. Each column is one model. They are cascaded, one going into the next. These follow exactly the setup of the wicker amp combo model that I've got in the addendum. And in the addendum, I talk about a specific way that I'm setting up how each of these stages overdrives the next one. It is definitely not the only way to do it. It's just a way to do it. So um, you can. there's a lot of variation in here for you to play around with on your own. When we look at down here, these meters, each of these meters is going to indicate the DC operating point shift that's occurring within the triode model. And the way that I've got each, tri each cascading into next is that you're going to see that they're going to light up in a certain sequence in a certain way. That's not what's really important. What is important is that they are showing you how far the signal is being uh, offset, uh, DC point shifted. Those DC point shifts are what generate a very, very interesting and difficult to emulate harmonic evolution that occurs. And you'll see what I mean when we plug the oscillator in. In fact, let's do that right now. Here is the oscillator. I've got it queued up at 440 hertz. Here's the analyzer uh, for the spectrum analyzer. Now, in the model, you know that I run the model in floating point. It is running where the floating point unit one is the same thing as one volt. So I've got volts running inside of the model. We can easily go far outside the plus and minus one limitation of the plugin. We'll, we'll cut the output signal down to get it on those on that boundary properly later at the end. 
the triodes are running in two, with 200 volt plate voltages, meaning that once the signal gets above 200 volts peak to peak or 100 volts peak, we will then be creating square waves. Now, the triodes can and do create square waves once they rail out themselves, and that is going to happen. M my um, favorite part of this is in between when grid conduction just starts and when all the triodes have gone into square waves. Once they have all gone into railing out and saturation, you do get a really cool high gain uh, lead sound. But there isn't a lot of harmonic variation as you turn the preamp up and down by a tiny increments. When you're in the sweet spot where you get a lot of harmonic variation where, when the, the triodes are, are shifting, that is when that preamp knob has a whole lot of variation as you move it around. Uh, in, in small amounts. So it's in this area that we're going to be um, watching. So let's go ahead and listen to um, the oscillator and turn it on here. This is 440, the fundamental frequency. This is 880. This is an octave up musically, and it is the second harmonic. This is the third harmonic. The third harmonic is an octave plus a fifth above the fundamental musically. And then this is the fourth harmonic. So we've got two, four, six, eight, or these guys here, and then three, five, seven, and nine are right here. You can see that the odd harmonics have their own envelope, this curve they're on. The even harmonics are all at kind of the same level. As I begin moving the amplitude around here, we're gonna watch the harmonics change. Sometimes they're gonna change together. Sometimes the odd harmonics are going to move in one chunk and the even harmonics in another chunk. When the even harmonics are pronounced, you're gonna hear a lot of second harmonic, which is the octave sound. It is going to be what a lot of people call bright sounding. And when the even harmonics are, um, are very low in amplitude in comparison with the odd ones, we're gonna get what people call kind of a hollow sound. When all of the, the triodes are full into grid conduction and they're all producing nothing but square waves, you can wind up getting something that is actually relatively boring sounding. So I'm gonna, gonna stay in that, like I said, the sweet spot range. By the way, if you see this glitching right here, it has to do with the repainting with me talking and clicking. Um, and if you hear any clicks or pops in the audio, this is the parallels driver. When I'm sharing all this stuff across the two operating systems and running the video at the same time, it will click every now and then. So we'll see if that happens. So I'm going to bring this up, listen and watch here, and watch the DC offsets occurring here. Now, I tried to scrub it across that sweet spot right here, which is an area where the harmonic, uh, the harmonic evolution is very, very complicated. And it is that kind of complex harmonic evolution that's one of the things that we're looking for in a good triode model. So I only have these four triodes turned on. There's no EQ, there's no filtering, there's no nothing. So I'm not gonna bother playing the strat sound through it. It won't sound anything like the final amplifier. It's just gonna be very distorted. So I'm gonna leave it here for this video. The next batch of videos are going to be on Rack AFX 7 alone, creating projects, doing GUIs. So I'll see you in those videos.